Hi everyone, welcome to the next episode of Micro Monsters. Um, today we're going to be doing a magic trick. Um, so we're going to be using the micro bit and we've bought some magic buttons today. We've got an A and a B button label. And we're going to show you a trick uh, using the A and B button, which hopefully you'll be astounded by. And then if you're really lucky and you carry on watching and you promise to subscribe to our channel, we'll show you how the trick actually works. So let's get on and do the trick. What we've done is we've labelled, so it's easier to read, the micro bit buttons. So A has a label that says A, B has a label that says B. And we've written a little program that when you press A, it says A, and when you press B, it says B. It's really simple. If you carry on pressing A, it will go back again. There's no trick. It will just change between them. Okay. But what we're going to do now is we're going to try changing the labels over. So we take the label A, put it on B, yeah. take the label B, yeah. put it on A. Okay, so now if we were to press A, which is on the left, but we've labelled B, it will still say A. And when we press A, a B on the right, which is labelled A, it will still press B, because all we've done is change the label. So let's try that. So if you press A, it says A. And what happens if you press, um, do it again? If you press A, it's, a, it's changed over with the label. There we go. What's going on? So if we press... A label with the B button. It does. Yeah, my mind does. B. How did you get it to swap? <laughs> you, you, show me again. You press A. It says A when. You, but that's magic. But, but change it back again. Change it back again. Let's see if it works. Okay, so if you press A now, it says A when you press. That's magic. Yeah. Awesome. So that's that's the trick. I think that's pretty cool. Um, as soon as Jasmine lets me know how we actually do it, that'd be quite cool. But, um, so if you don't want to know how to do the trick, then goodbye and thank you for watching the episode. If you want to watch how we did the trick and show you how we code the trick, and um, once Jasmine actually tells me how it works, um, then stay on. But please make sure you subscribe to us first. And in a few seconds, we'll start showing you how the trick works. So thanks for staying on. Um, magic tricks are often quite cool when you don't know how they're done. Um, but we're going to show you how they're done because this is all about code and that's what our channel's about. Um, but I don't actually know how it is done yet. So we're going to need Jasmine to tell us what the secret of this trick really is. How, how does it swap? Is it magic labels? Uh, no, it's not magic labels. It's... A magic magnet. Okay, so that's a really strong magnet that we bought for a different project on, on eBay. So how, how does it how's it work? Well, if I swap my hands over. Uh, if the magnet is near the micro bit, then it detects that it is, and it switches over the pictures from A to B and B to A. Okay, so show us that working. Uh, okay. Oh, it's sticking. I press B. So the magnet's near, and it says... B, okay, and then you press A. Mm -hmm. There you go. And if you take the magnet away, and try again. B. Oh. That's probably too close. Yeah. <laughs> B goes to B. Okay. A. So there's nothing to do with swapping these labels over at all? Nope. Okay. So how did you do that during the trick? Because we didn't see the magnet. So what, what did you do to trick us? Well, with my magical hands, I... I I held it in my hand and I can seal it. So when I click A, it goes to B. Uh, no, when I click B, it goes to A. And when I click A, it goes to B. Okay. So now we're going to go and show you the code for that and how it actually works and how you can program your own market bit to do this trick. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to learn uh, how Jasmine coded this and um, show you how yeah. the trick works. Um, so what do we need to start off with? Um, do we need something to detect the magnet? Yep. Is that how it works? Okay, so there is a bit hidden now. So we're, we're using our favorite um, editor, which is um, at codethemicrobit.org, like that, or .com, sorry. Um, and it will come to this address at the top, ptx.microbit.org. Um, it's almost identical to the block editor on the Microbit website, but it's being constantly updated. It's got lots of nice new things in it uh, and a bit more powerful. So this is one we use now, um, and you have seen in our other tutorials. 
So we're looking for input because it's from the mag from the um, compass is what we're using. But the one we want is hidden under this more. So we click more, uh, and we want to read magnetic force. All right. Yep. And you can read all about magnetic force if you don't understand what it's doing uh, by clicking on this link here, and it will open up a little help page for us to read all about it. Um, we don't really care what axis, we don't care whereabouts the magnet is around the micro bit, we just want a strength of it. Um, so we can just choose strength. Okay? Yeah. Um, so we need that, and we've got to measure that, have we? Well, yeah. all, all the time. So let's, uh, let's go and look in advanced. So we want something running in, in like the background, not the main bit of the code, but something constantly running. So we can use this run in background block in control. It means that the rest of the code can carry on running, but this will always be running at the same time as well. So we want to say, uh, we want to measure something, but we want to loop around doing it all the time, yeah? Yep. So we should be able to use the forever block. Carry on running forever. You can use the while and you just leave it on true but forever is just cleaner and easier um, so we want to check that the magnets near it mm -hmm. so we're gonna need some kind of if or something I guess is that right yeah uh, and I think we're gonna want to do a different thing if it's not so we'll use an if then so we want to measure the magic for the, the magnetic magic force kind of as well for this bit the magnetic force and when it is a, so when when you don't have a magnet near it from our other projects we've done with this you get kind of like a background magnetic from the the Earth's magnetic field of like forty fifty something like that yeah. so we should probably measure if it's like something like over a hundred bigger than a hundred yeah so in logic we've got. Uh, this. So if magnetic force is greater than 100, let's say. Um, but that there's a bit of a problem with magnets, isn't there? Because what do magnets have? A plus and a minus sign? Yeah, so one way is different from the other. So the strength will come out with either a minus symbol behind it, uh, in front of it, sorry, or not a minus signal and it'll tell you which way around the magnet is but we don't care which way around the magnet is so we need to get rid of that minus symbol um so there is somewhere in here i think in maths and in more there is this absolute absolute basically says i don't care whether it's a negative number or a positive number i just want to know how much it is so if it's negative 50 it'll make it 50 if it's 50 it'll stay 50. so we put that into there it doesn't matter if it's negative or not. The number that comes out will always be positive and we can check it's over 100. Um, so that's going to run in the background. It's going to check this is greater than 100, so is the magnet near it. What Do we do? We need like a variable or something to to know whether the magnet's near it that we use? Yeah. Does that sound a good sign? So let's create a new variable. Uh, what do you reckon we should call this variable? Is switched. Because it's whether we've switched the buttons, right? Yeah. Effectively, so it is switched. Uh, and is it a number or is it what? What thing should this variable store? I think it should store these trues and false. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if the field strength is greater than a hundred, then we do want it to be switched because the magnet's near. Yeah. And we'll duplicate this. If it isn't near a hundred which is either the magnet isn't there or it, we've just taken it away, we want it to be false. We want it to go back to not being switched, yeah? Yeah. And should it be set right at the beginning, should it be true or false, do you think? False. Because right at the beginning, we probably don't have the magnet near it. Yeah. All right. So now we've got a bit that detects the magnet because it's going to run in the background. It's going to run forever, keep looping around, doing this again and again and again. It's going to say if the magnet's near it, so the strength is greater than 100, and you might have to change that 100 value depending on your magnet. So if it doesn't work, change it up and down and see how it works. Um, so if it is near it, set is switch to true, otherwise set it to false. So now we've got that bit, what are the next two bits we need? Um, we need to check the buttons, don't we? Because it's all about the buttons. 
So when button A is pressed, the kind of point of the trick is it should show A. So let's start there, yeah? Yep. So in basic show A. And we'll duplicate that. Change Put button B. B. Right, but that at the moment is no trick because it won't change. <laughs> so what are we going to have to do to make button A switch over and button B switch over? Um, if the magnet is there. And what? How do we know if the magnet is there because of this code down here? If it's true. Okay, so we need a logic if. So what we're checking is true. If the magnet is near it or not. So if if switched. If if switch is switched equals true. Uh, no, we don't. Want do we want true or false there? So if switched equals true, show. Uh, false. False. Otherwise, so else show. So what should it show if it is switched? B. B. Okay. So if we get rid of this for a moment, duplicate all of this, and on button B, if it if it is switched is false, it should show. B, and then A. Okay. So now if we press button A and there's no magnet, so press it, is switched, is not true, it will show A, and B will show B. And if, if switched has been changed to true by our code down here, then it will switch over and show A and B. Yeah. I think that's all we need. Yeah, pretty simple when you think about it. Yeah, but it's a nice little trick, isn't it? Yeah. So that's all you really need to do. You then, if you haven't used this or any of the other ones before, you click download and copy it to your micro bit. Um, or if you've ever looked um, at this, uh, you can go and use this in uh, Uploader. That's what we run, and it runs in the background and uploads to your micro bit. Um, and then that's how you perform the trick. Go and buy a magnet or just get like a fridge magnet if you've got one of those around. Try it out for yourself and let us know how you get on. But make sure you don't give the secret away uh, without subscribing and without telling people about our channel. And I think that's all for now. Bye. Bye. <laughs>